Hi, my name is James Speckert, and I'm going to talk to you about a tool called GeoGuessr. It's a virtual reality slash augmented reality tool that it isn't as fancy as the most advanced and expensive virtual reality systems, but it more than makes up for that by being immersive, founded in the real world, and most importantly, it can be free to use. All you need is a browser and an internet connection. I'm gonna walk you through what GeoGuessr is, what it looks like to use, what options teachers have with it, and give some examples of appropriate activities for different audiences. A simple activity for a young user, a team activity for middle schoolers, and a more complex activity for older learners. At its foundation, GeoGuessr is a tool to explore random locations around the world through Google Maps. And it has a gameplay element by letting you guess where in the world you get placed, awarding you more points the closer you get. It encourages curiosity and exploration about the world, and the fact that it is made up of real images of real places gives it a practical immediacy that improves learning. But it can also open up a world of possibilities for instruction to many kinds of learners for different purposes. By making you explore the world through random snapshots, you can do simple things like show young school children different climates or countries, but you can also have older learners confront more complex questions about public policy, infrastructure, socioeconomics, and climate change. But before we get that far, let me show you the basics of GeoGuessr with a free and open game. Here I am, I'm going to go to geoguessercom slash free and click on play free button. We'll see the basic layout of how GeoGuessr works. Okay, and as you see, we are here in Google Street View somewhere in the world. Um, we can look around like you do in Street View. I have a um, home and a car. We can move around just a little bit in the free version. See this intersection? Maybe that sign right there is a clue. We can zoom in and zoom out. And let's say I think this is somewhere in India. Uh, so I can mouse over to the corner here and we get the world map popping up. Simply, uh, and, and on this map we can zoom in as well. Zoom in button. Let's say we're, I think we're here. I'm gonna, I clicked on the map, I'm gonna click guess, and it's gonna show me, in fact, we, the, we clicked here in India, the answer was in Sri Lanka. I got 2,854 points, and my guess was 1.1 kilom thousand kilometers from where, um, where the, the actual location was. And we can keep zooming in if we want. I'm using the mouse wheel. And we're outside Colombo. We are at this particular intersection is where we were looking from. I will click one more round just to give you a sense of where we can go. And here we are, another green location. We can see right here, if I look down, revolutionary government of Zanzibar, I'm actually not quite sure uh, where in Africa that is, um, but it's somewhere in Africa. It's on, we're on a road. Uh, not a whole lot of great uh, cultural clues, but luckily for me, I happened to look down first thing off. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and make another guess. I'm gonna say somewhere in, uh, uh, I could, you know, obviously go around this uh, map and look for uh, any sign that is Zanzibar. Um, I'm just gonna click this corner of South Africa and see what happens. I know we're in Africa somewhere. Okay, there we go. It's actually way up here. Zanzibar is an island. Ah, I've already learned. Uh, so I thought it was, uh, I didn't, I never knew it was in, in my life. And we'll try one more round. Here's another location. It's rainy, it's stormy. 
not quite sure where this is. This, uh, maybe let's say Australia. Let's try down by Sydney, Airport Macquarie. Let's try this road here, take a guess. And this is one thing that the free version of GeoGuessr will uh, make you do, which is uh, wait while they try to sell you the full version, which we will get to. Continue with the game. And, you know, not so bad. I mean, I was uh, over two and a half thousand kilometers away, but at least the right part of the world uh, outside Port Moresby. So we do this two more times. I'll do that quickly. We are, here's a guy. Hi. Going down dirt road. Now, this you might think is going to be completely uh, quite possible, uh, quite impossible. And so uh, I think you're right. I'm going to click somewhere in Ecuador. Let's see where we go. And it was not anywhere close to Ecuador. It was here in Malaysia. I'll do one more. I got zero points because I was so far away. Here's one more uh, dusty road. Once again, not quite sure where this could be. And I'll pick uh, somewhere in sort of Central Africa again and see where we go. And it was in India. All right, so now I've done all my five guesses. I'll see my, I can click on view summary. It'll show me where I, uh, all my guesses and dotted lines to where I, uh, uh, how far off I was. And I can click on game breakdown. And I can scroll down on the page and it'll once again show me my locations. I can zoom in, zoom out as needed to find specific locations and it'll show me my total number of points. So you can do some things with the free basic game. I want to commend GeoGuessr for allowing a free option because it helps us tackle concerns about equitable access among our students and it helps us be kind to our departmental budgets. If you or your school want to spend the $1.99 a month cost for a pro license, which is a really good deal, you can use one of the thousands of pre-made maps that focus on single countries, major cities, world landmarks, and you can create custom games of your own if you want to focus on things like locations around your own school or your own town or on a particular topic. So let's see how that might look. One other thing that, uh, that we could have with GeoGuessr is have students pick five places that are part of their life story. So I might pick there, that's my hometown neighborhood. Uh, and then maybe, you know, I lived in the Bay Area of California for a while. So maybe I go up here and I will pick the Bay Area. Say right about there, okay? And then I'm going to zoom all the way out and say, hey, you know, I did a study abroad in Britain. So I pick a place where I studied abroad. And then we'll zoom back out, pick where I currently live, which is now in North Carolina. Down, right down here in Durham, North Carolina. All right, let's pick a spot. Durham, North Carolina. Okay. So I made my map. I can give it a name. Teacher's Journey. Give it a second. I can do, I have a couple options for how to do a background, uh, an avatar, add a decoration, that uh, doesn't quite fit, and create the map.
So I have a map and other people can now play my map and take a guess at where each of these locations are. So let's think of an example lesson for young learners. So maybe I could ask third grade students to find examples of something that you're studying in their own town. Uh, for example, ask them to look for the newest building and the oldest building, or find something that they think is the happiest building and something that they think is the meanest building. Um, or you could just do something else that having to do with geography or culture in your own town. Or we can look at a basic lesson that can be done in a group, say at the eighth grade level where four to five students in a social studies class gather around a single laptop and work together to try to guess their locations with the highest team scores winning. We could ask follow-up questions about the people, the architecture, the history of each of these locations. So let's see how that might work if a teacher has a pro license. So I've logged in, I'm gonna click on Famous Places. We will Pick single player to start the game. Here's a grand castle. I will walk down the path using the arrows. Very small steps. Let's see from this courtyard, can we tell where we are? There's some some flags up there. I am going to say, let's go, I'm not actually sure where this is, but let's say we are in Seville, Spain. In fact, we were up in Lisbon. Okay, you know, not so bad. Try one more, Stonehenge, beautiful. Here we are. I have a slightly better sense of where Stonehenge is in the Salisbury Plains. There's Salisbury, Cranbourne Chase. Now it's off the A35, it's around here. Let's see how close we got, 25 kilometers. One more, near a cathedral, and quite a town, up on a hillside. Slightly French buildings, let's go with Paris. There we go, that was eight kilometers away. Finally, the Taj Mahal, or now the Taj Mahal. It's in India. Do I know where in India? Not quite, I'm just going to click in India. And I was 571 kilometers away. One last world landmark, haha, -ha, US capital. The mall, the reflecting pool. Okay. Can I do a little better? I'm hoping so. Let's try to get extremely close to the capital. It's the US Capitol. There's a peace monument. I, uh, that looks like the peace monument to me. Looks like we are near this particular walkway. Let's try here. How close am I? So close, I got a badge. Oh, it was the other one. I was 165 miles away. Oh, sorry, 165 meters away. Okay, I'm gonna take a look at my, my guesses. I can take a game breakdown and look where I was in all these cases. 
But as I mentioned before, we can use this tool to ask deeper questions of older students. Let's think about online summer orientation before an incoming college student arrives on campus. One of the first things that you do when you meet a roommate or anybody on campus is ask, so where are you from? But there's more to that question than you might think. What comes to mind when someone says they're from Alabama or from Southern California? What about Saudi Arabia or China? Images of foreign locations and cultures can conjure up pretty strong stereotypes. And in an orientation lesson, we can talk about how we can meet new people in a receptive way that avoids stereotyping and leaves us open to hearing their experiences in a non-judgmental way. So let's think about how GeoGuessr can play a role in helping incoming college students uh, adjust to having a roommate or a classmate that might be from a very different background and how they can learn to become part of a more international college student body. We can do this in GeoGuessr by helping them think about comparing the geographic and cultural elements of their own upbringing with those of people from other places. So one of the simple ways to help break down this idea of culture is think about the products, the practices, and the perspectives that people have. So we could start by having students find a street in their own neighborhood in Google Street View, and maybe write out to a potential roommate, what are some of the products, practices, or perspectives that are visible from that street view? So let me share an example from my own neighborhood. So if you create your own maps, you can pick individual locations, or you can draw a polygon on the map to show, and it'll show you locations within that polygon at random. I'm going to go with polygon with hand-picked locations, and I'm going to pick the neighborhood where I grew up in San Diego, California. Let's see. So I can talk about my neighborhood in Southern California. I can point out some uh, products, uh, which is uh, big two-story houses, slightly old. Um, and these houses are actually uh, fancier than uh, now than they were when I was a kid. Uh, this is Southern California. Housing prices gone up, have gone up. And... The, uh, and so richer people are now living in my neighborhood, which wasn't quite as rich as it, uh, when I was a kid. That means that the uh, yards look really quite nice now, and the houses are well-painted, and everything's looking really pretty great. You can see there's a lot of cars, so obviously a lot of people are driving. And uh, what this, uh, you know, this uh, speaks to people really achieving the American dream of having a two-car garage and uh, a big house uh, with a yard. So maybe that I can, we can talk about that. You know, blue skies, uh, typical of Southern California. Uh, it looks like this a lot of the year. Um, so, uh, you know, this is not how the hometown of a someone from Buffalo, New York is going to look or... Uh, the hometown of someone from, uh, you know, Siberia is not going to look like this with palm trees uh, running down the road. Once the students have talked about themselves through their own location, now we can have them play GeoGuessr with two main objectives. First, as they play through the five locations, as they play, they need to remember two of the locations. The one where they got the highest score, where they got the best guess, and the one where they got the lowest score, where their guess was the most incorrect. So let's play a game and see how that might work. Here's a location that looks quite difficult. It's a hallway, but what do we have on this hallway? We have some writing. You know, maybe this is from a Japanese university of some kind. We can take a look at these lockers. We can ask what kind of cultures require lockers like this or are used like this. But maybe um, we'll try to zoom out into this hallway. 
have a better sense. Uh, definitely looks like a university of some kind uh, in Japan. So let's uh, let's pick Tokyo. We could definitely ask, you know, for a college student, we could compare how this looks to one of uh, to an American university. Uh, it, I think, uh, you know, we have different vending machines. But let's see where we are here in Japan. But I think that looks like Japanese writing. Uh, I'm going to base based on my knowledge of how scripts look, and and it's Nagoya, so uh, in Japan, um, 269 kilometers away. Let's try another location. So I could ask questions about uh, trees, plants, highways. Uh, this could be many places in the world, I believe, but it's a location, obviously, we have uh, big paved freeways. Um, there are some countries where this is more rare than it is in the US. Um, you know, we can try to take a look at what side people are driving on to get a sense of uh, where they where we are in, in the world, what kind of cars people drive. Um, and so let's say we're somewhere in Central Europe. Maybe, um, let's try Hungary. Let's try Central Hungary. We could ask, you know, what would somebody who grows up in this area look like? It was Central, it was Central Russia. Um, they were outside uh, Mamadish. Here's another location. Let's say, you know, I, hey, I, I live in Appalachia. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe this looks an awful lot like uh, Eastern Tennessee. I've seen lots of rolling hills and curving roads like this. I think that this looks very familiar for me as someone from Eastern Tennessee. So I'm gonna say somewhere out here, kind of in the hills. How close am I? Pretty far. There's something about, about this. What? This is from a place in Brazil near Sabinopolis. What might I have in common uh, with someone from this kind of location? If, they're, uh, if the environment looks something like mine, how would I treat them if I met them? Uh, would I assume that they're very different from me? Would I assume that they're very similar to me. So rock wall. Let's say somewhere central England. It's close. And here's an urban town. This is not the kind of cities that we set up in the United States. Um, this is going to be a different uh, different country and it's gonna have be a very different kind of living than what we're used to in suburban United States. Um, you know, people who grow up in this kind of location are gonna have different experiences. They're gonna be used to shopping different kinds of products. They're going to be speaking different languages. They're probably gonna have different assumptions about uh, how things, uh, how crowds work, how um, how uh, maybe personal boundaries are different in this kind of uh, denser uh, ur uh, urban environment. Um, so yeah, so let's uh, let's. Uh, I'm not quite sure where this uh, where this is. I'm gonna say Portugal. Let's try Portugal. Let's try somewhere outside Lisbon. See what happens. Who's in Spain? Not so bad. As you can see, we also gain experience points every time we play a game, which is another level of gamification that GeoGuessr offers.
All right, now the students have made their guesses and hopefully they remember where they got their best score and where they got their worst score. And now maybe posting in a forum, they can answer four questions, two on each of their two locations. So first let's ask about the location where they got the good score. Question one, for your good score location, what did you see that helped you find that place on the map? Question two, for your good score location, what do you think is a common product, practice, or perspective that you might personally have in common with a student from that place? Question three, for your bad score location, did you bring in any incorrect assumptions about geography or culture that caused you to get the location wrong? And question four, for your bad score location. What do you think might be a harmful stereotype that someone would have about a student from that location? These kinds of questions will help generate discussion about the assumptions we bring in when we meet new people from around the world. And it's a more in-depth lesson for teenage and adult learners that might be enabled through GeoGuessr. There are clearly a huge number of other possibilities for using its gamified system of real-world Street View maps. You can check it out at GeoGuessr, that's G-E-O-G-U-S-S-R dot com.